Hey guys, Shurim here, and today I'm going to be testing the brand new Koenigsegg CC850 at Golden Max on the new track Tuscany in Drive Syndicate 7. Please consider subscribing if you have not already, and be sure to check out my Furum Clips channel, Furum TV channel, and Purple Team Discord. Links to all those will be down in the description, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So, this first race is my first time ever driving the CC850, my first race in the Drive Syndicate, and my first race ever on Tuscany. A lot of firsts there. And I thought I would talk in this video about all three of those, the car, the track, and the drive syndicate. So starting off with the car, my first impressions of it were decent. It's it's very fast. It is one of the fastest cars in the game. Not as fast as something like the Tuatara or the Esco or the Venom, but it's certainly in the top 10. Now the car that I would most compare it to is probably the Trion Nemesis because of that high top speed and the very low uh, nitro efficiency, which is probably what most people dislike the most about this car. And it's very good drifting, handling, and floaty capability. So if you like the Tryon, there's a decent chance you might like this car. Now, I've seen a lot of people say that they don't like this car. Um, I'm sort of in the middle. It's fine. I would lean more positive on it, but I can certainly see how the low nitro could be an issue for some people. It certainly did get annoying in some cases. With that, let's move on to the track. Now, the or this car is a very good, I guess, test to see whether or not this is somewhat of a top speed oriented track. Am I able to stay sustained at a high top speed for a long amount of time on this track or not? The answer to that is not really. I would not say that Tuscany is a top speed oriented track. Now, it's certainly, it's certainly got its parts. It's got sections where you can stay at a higher speed for a sustained amount of time. But just like a lot of the more recent tracks added to the game, there are just far too many curves and turns and sharp corners to make it so that high top speed cars can gain any super huge advantage on maybe slower ones that are able to get around the turns easier. Now, unlike some fast cars, this one does not struggle in the drifting department. It's not that it can't get around the turns, it's that it can't get back up to speed after them due to that low nitro. And a lot of high top speed cars have this very low nitro, so that is something to keep in mind. So yeah. Not really much of a top speed oriented track. We're gonna have to keep waiting for one of those. I think honestly, out of all the tracks that have been added to the game since launch, probably New York and Nevada are the most top speed oriented, but even those are still not as much so as something like the Himalayas. Now in terms of how the track looks, honestly, I think it's one of the coolest looking tracks we've ever gotten in an asphalt game. It's set in at this really cool, I guess it's close to sunset, but not so dark that it's really, you know, like super sunsetty. And everything has this cool shimmering sort of glowing aura to it. Now, other tracks have done this as well. Buenos Aires and Osaka come to mind. Um, but it's just, it's a very beautiful track. And I think the castles look cool. That Going through that castle is one of the neatest things that I've experienced in an asphalt game in a while. And there are some neat physics sections too, like you saw on that variant. There's a part where the road is broken up and you just dr jump from like block of road to block. And like that is one of those sections of the track that is, you know, that you can get up to a decent amount of speed on, but you can't really stay at it very long since there's a turn right after it. So it, it's a bit of give and take. So these races were recorded in the early sections of Drive Syndicate 7, where you always start out with the flagship car of the Drive Syndicate. And if there's a new track, that's typically uh, the track that you drive on as well. I made a similar video to this um, when the Jumeric came out because it was in the drive, I don't even remember which Drive Syndicate that was, but Buenos Aires was a new track, so I drove the Jamera on the new Drive Syndicate on the new track Buenos Aires. So I decided to do that again here because you guys seem to enjoy that video. So the Drive Syndicate itself, it's not a whole lot different from Drive Syndicates of the past that I can tell. Um, I imagine it will be similarly as painful to get the car either in terms of grinding or money spent or both. As always, I'm going to get try to get as far as I can in it. Um, I'll, I don't know if I'll purchase all the relay packs, um, but they are back after the other kind of packs that we got last time. 
and kind of ironically, <laughs> I remember we were all kind of upset last time when the Relay Packs went away and they had those kind of random packs instead, but I don't even know if this was on purpose or not, but they made it so that you could get basically double the amount as you could before, so it actually turned out we were able to get a bit farther in it, but still, it was kind of random, and I don't like randomness as much, so the Relay Packs are overall better in my opinion. Now, the one thing I will say about this Drive Syndicate that might allow it to be slightly easier than previous ones is the ability to use wild cards. Now we had wild cards the last time as well, um, but we didn't, or they were fairly new to the game, so we didn't have quite as many of them at the time. Now, since wild cards have been in the game for a while longer, um, even though they are limited to 10 of each kind, like, her, I think, um, star and class combination. I've actually maxed out a lot of my wild card slots for those combinations, and I did this on purpose. And the reason is because of Drive Syndicates. And I hope Gameloft does not ever change this, because in my opinion, Drive Syndicates are the single most useful use case for wild cards, because there is typically no other way with these new cars here to get blueprints for them than to buy them with syndicate coins, or that's how it's been in past drive syndicates. But now, since you can use wild cards in any car, uh, you can essentially get 10 free blueprints of any drive syndicate car per star. So like, I had 10 one star D blueprints used up. I used them on the the Nismo, so I didn't. I I bought like the ten, um, the ten ones that you can get in the Syndicate store, and I ended up not actually having to buy any of the packs for that car, which would have wasted a decent amount of Syndicate coins. And I plan to keep doing the same thing, like with the other cars. Like I have some one-star C-Class wild cards. I'm gonna use that probably on whatever the C-Class car of this event is. And I'm just gonna keep doing that all throughout it. I've not gone very far in it yet, um, so that's why I'm talking about it like this, but I think that will be very useful. The other thing that can come in handy is the ability to donate wild cards. I needed one more wild card to star up my Nismo so that I wouldn't have to buy a pack for 5,000 Syndicate coins just for one. So I requested a donation of it and I got it. Thanks, the Feek Loves Barbie. Well, let me know guys down in the comments below what do you think about the CC850, Tuscany, or Drive Syndicate 7. With that, um, that will be the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed and consider subscribing for more Asphalt, Forza, Minecraft, and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.